Welcome back to Arsenal News TV and today we're going to look at the Arsenal player ratings versus Newcastle and we're going to look at how the Gunners got on individually in their Premier League clash with Newcastle United at St James's Park. I thought it was a comfortable victory by Arsenal against the struggling Newcastle side. We're going to go straight into it with the goalkeeper with Matt Ryan and he was commanding and loud as ever. The Australian continues to make a case that he should be a permanent signing in the summer, a good save from St Maximum as well shows he can back all the talk up. So yeah, I think he was a decent in goal, he has a clean sheet and his first victory in an Arsenal shirt, being an Arsenal fan, for his performance today he deserves a 6. Next up we got Hector Bellerin and it was so much better going forward from the Spaniard who really made a case to start against Villarreal. His running caused a lot of problems for the Newcastle wingbacks after falling behind Callum Chambers in the pecking order he may begin rising up again with performances like this. And I thought he was actually quite decent today, normally he's, I see him out of position but is it because it was a struggling Newcastle United team that pretty much just defended, defended and never looked like they're going to attack apart from just sent Maximum doing some form of a wonder goal. But for his performance, he deserves an 8. Next up, we got David Luiz and the Brazilian was excellent on the ball and did a good job of helping expose the gaps in behind the Newcastle wingbacks. He seems to have a calming effect on Gabriel alongside him, as well as with his leadership and experience. It was a huge blow to see him come off with a muscle injury that way may mean this is the last match of his Arsenal career. But that's only if Mikel Arteta doesn't extend his ex contract extension and we have to wait and see if everything in the summer transfer window sees David Luiz leave or stay one year longer with the Gunners but for his performance he deserves an 8. Next up we got Gabriel Magalhaes. He was better than in previous matches for sure although he was relatively untested for much of the early parts of the game. He started the second half a little shaky but grew into it once his compatriot went off and was a consistent threat from set pieces. And I think Gabriel Magalhaes is someone that looks much better alongside an experienced defender like David Luiz and Miklos says that has his two centre-back pairings in my opinion. For his performance, he deserves a 6. Next up we got Granit Xhaka and with Mikel Arteta having declared that Kieran Tierney is unlikely to be fit for Thursday, surely the answer can't continue to be playing Granit Xhaka as his direct replacement. The Swiss international can't be blamed for his lack of pace but each time Alan San Maximum ran at him he looked hideously exposed just as he did in Spain earlier this week. And knowing Unai Emery, yeah, I'm really going to be scared thinking about the left hand side. I don't know what Mikel Arteta is going to do. Is he going to refer back to a back three? We have to wait and see what Mikel Arteta has up his sleeve because he knows that Una Emery looks for a team's weakness and our huge weakness is that left back position. But for his performance, he deserves a six. Next up, we got Mohamed El Neni, and the Egyptian was perhaps an unpopular pick in midfield, but his first half performance was very impressive. Good passing, solid defensive awareness and a goal to boot. He faded a bit in the second like the rest of the team though. And I think Mohamed Elneny is someone that is fighting and someone that does everything he can on the pitch. And for his performance he deserves a 7. Next up we got Danny Ceballos and he had a few moments where he didn't look as though he knew where he was supposed to be in the press but equally had some good moments on the ball with his close control. The inconsistency within a game that sums up his whole season more or less. And I think in terms of Danny Ceballos he's someone that's going to leave the Gunners and he's probably not going to have a new permanent deal or a new loan at the club and it's happy to see him go as well so for his performance I think it's fair to say he deserves a 6. Next up we got Willian and he was relatively anonymous again from the Brazilian who did in fairness put in some decent deliveries. Nowhere near enough to threaten Nicola Pepe or Bukayo Saka's starting positions on Thursday though. You can clearly see that Willian was a big miss and a big blow for the Gunners after signing him on a free transfer as he hasn't lived up to his potential and for his performance he deserves a 6. Next up we got Martin Odegaard and he picked up some good positions in space in the middle of the park but his teammates didn't seem to want to use him. 
When they did, he played a nice ball out to Gabriel Martinelli for the second goal, but couldn't influence the game as much as we saw him do before his injuries. And I think that's something where he just has to have a good run of games. He has two right now under his belt. And hopefully for the game, if he starts versus Villarreal, will be ready and impressive once again before he had those injuries. But for his performance, I think it's fair to say he deserves a six. Next up, we got Gabriel Martinelli. The Brazilian was very impressive yet again when started on the left. His willingness to either cut in on his right hand side to shoot or drive on his left hand side to cross gave Josh Murphy a torrid afternoon. The assist for Pierre Emerick Aubameyang's goal was fully deserved, but with Pierre Emerick Aubameyang's return, you fear it still might not be enough for him to start against Villarreal in midweek. And I think for me, everyone knows, every Arsenal fan, everyone apart from Mikel Arteta wants Gabriel Martinelli to start because he will cause that right back position where John Foyth was someone that was very impressive in the game. But if Martinelli can attack and let this guy defend, then it will be a good shout for Mikel Arteta to put him. But it depends on his bias and would he go for Martinelli. But for his performance, he deserves a nine. Next up, we got Pierre Emerick Aubameyang, and he was making his first start in around a month. And the Gabon striker still did look a little off the pace at time as he continues to recover from malaria. However, despite his obvious fatigue, Pierre Emerick Aubameyang's movement was still very sharp, and it was a on full display for the goal. He will surely start on Thursday, which is a huge boost for the Gunners. And even though I love to see a Gabriel Martinelli or a Eddie Inketia, we know Pierre Mika Bamian loves to score in big games, like Alexandre Lacazette, who probably might be out as well. We have to rely on our front man, we have to rely on our talisman, and I think he has it in his game. Just needs to be match fit for the game versus Villarreal and be hungry. And for his performance, he deserves a 7. Now moving on to the substitutes, we got Callum Chambers. He had big shoes to fill after coming in for David Luiz, but did a good job. The fact that he came on at centre-back despite playing most of the season at right-back shows the versatility that makes him such a valuable member of the Arsenal squad and for me someone that should be given a new deal in my opinion but for his performance he deserves a 6. And finally we have Nicola Pepe he did some running down the left wing after coming on but the game already won he couldn't influence the game too much so he deserves a standard 6 for his performance and Thomas Partey came on too late to influence the game. It was a decent performance but it's all eyes on the game versus Newcastle versus Villarreal but other than that guys remain blessed. Stay tuned for the next video and peace.